Are you new to needle felting but scared to death of tackling wire armatures? Well sit back and relax because I'm going to debunk this horror movie image that armatures have and show you how simple and easy making wire armatures really can be. In a moment I'll take you through making a simple armature for any four-legged animal step by step. But first you need to ask yourself, do I really need to use an armature? And if so, why? If you're needle felting a small item it may be able to stand without any wire armature, like this beagle I made that has no wire in it whatsoever. Ouch! That hurts you know. Oh sorry, didn't realise. Or if an item is shaped like some of these were, they'll sit on a large base so don't need an armature. However there are two situations where you may need to use an armature. The first is if you want to needle felt a larger animal or a person that is too big or heavy to stay in that position without being supported in some way. The second situation is where you want to felt an animal or person that you can put into different poses or perhaps use for stop motion animation. In this video I'll be talking about the first situation, but if you're interested in me covering armatures for stop motion animation in the future, please let me know in the comments. So first, which wire should you use? Basically, the bigger your needle felted item is, the more sturdy the wire needs to be to support the weight. So if it's going to be two and a half to four inches tall, pipe cleaners or chenille stems will be fine. I like using pipe cleaners as it makes attaching the wool a lot easier, as the wool will cling to the fluffy chenille, whereas when you use plain wire, the wool tends to slide round as you're trying to wrap it round the wire. I'll show you some more tricks that will help with this later, but when buying chenille stems, be aware that they're usually 12 inches or 30 centimetres long, but also come in different widths. So when they say 4mm, 6mm or 9mm, this refers to the width of the fuzziness of the chenille and bears no relation to how thick or sturdy the wire is. Not all chenille stems are the same either. I bought these on Amazon and they're quite flimsy compared to some that I've had for a long time, so you might find you need to shop around. If your animal is going to be about four inches tall or more, then you might need to use thicker wire, which will give the weight more support. I've also used a one millimeter plastic coated garden wire and two millimeter thick aluminium wire, or aluminum as it's pronounced in America. I'll come onto these wires later and explain what you can do to help attach the wool. But for now, especially if this is your first armature, I'd really recommend you using a 12 inch pipe cleaners or chenille stems. So there are lots of ways you can make an armature. There isn't really any rules. So don't be afraid to adapt this and play around with the wire to make the armature meet your needs. It really is easier than it looks. But to create any armature, my first essential tip is to print out a side view image of the animal, the exact size that you're wanting to make it, or roughly draw it the right size. This will really help in making sure your legs are the same length as each other and the right length in proportion to its body. Please don't forget to click the like button if you're enjoying this content. By doing this, you'll help the needle felters find this video. So so here's how I would create a simple four-legged cat armature. If you wanted to make a realistic cat, you could print out a diagram of a cat's skeleton and use the skeleton as a guide to follow. The way I would create the armature is the same for both the realistic or the caricature cat. Start at the narrowest part. So I'll start at the tail as it's very thin. I'll explain why in a moment. Then follow your picture along the spine of the animal all the way up to the neck, leaving about half a centimetre or a quarter of an inch extra. Bend the chenille over and go back along the spine twisting the chenille together. This will make the spine of the animal firmer and better supported. Stop when you reach the point where the back legs attach to the spine and trim off the excess chenille with your wire cutters or pliers. This is why we started at the tail as it now means that you only have one width of chenille support for the tail and the tail won't look too wide once it has wool attached. Then take another chenille stem and fold it in half. Place the midpoint where you've just ended and wrap one end round the spine and take this end down the animal's hind leg following the leg joints and bends all the way down to its foot. Fold the chenille back around to make a very small loop for its foot but make sure this loop is smaller than you want the foot to be so that when you felt wool into the foot it's not going to be out of proportion with the rest of its body. Then take the remaining chenille and wrap it around the leg you have just formed all the way up as far as it'll go. This will add extra strength to the legs but also creating the legs in this way allows you to make them longer or shorter if necessary as later you can unwind the wire and change where the loop is to adjust the leg length. To save you from having to do this in the first place when you make the second leg make sure you repeat the same process following the same leg on the diagram or even using the first leg as a guide. That way these two legs should turn out exactly the same length and have the joints in the same 
places. Do the same for the front two legs with another chenille stem following the front legs on the picture. This will ensure the front legs are the right length in proportion to the back legs. Because as you can see on the skeleton, they're slightly different. You can use this same method for any four-legged animal. For example, here's an elephant skeleton that I followed in the same way. Starting at the tail, down the spine and working around the legs. I've used thicker wire to give this larger item more strength. The head can be made separately as I did here with sadness by making a hole in the base and gluing it onto the neck part of the armature. You might need to trim some of the chenille off first. Excuse me, but when am I going to get a coat? It's a bit cold being like this. Oh yes, yeah, sorry about that. Hang on a minute, how are you speaking when you haven't even got a head and never mind a mouth? Oh yes, oops. Oh well, you can edit that bit out later. So we best get on with covering the armature with some core carded wool. If you've used chenille stems or pipe cleaners, you should find it fairly easy to wrap the wool around, as it will grip the chenille. But if you've used plastic coated wire or aluminium wire or a smooth wire, you can cover some of the wire with masking tape, which will help the wool grip, or even attach a piece of double sided sticky tape just to start you off. I always start at the body, and here I'm not using masking tape or double sided tape. I'm just holding the end of the wool firmly while I wrap the core carded wool tightly around the body, making sure I wrap it as evenly as I can. Then make sure you use a thick needle felting needle. I'm using a 36 gauge triangular. This is so it doesn't break as easily if you hit the wire. Stab it down attaching it to itself and stab down either side of the wire while you rotate the body. Get another strip of carded wool and work your way wrapping the wool tightly down the leg and stabbing around the foot to hold it in place. Once I have a thin layer of core wool over the armature, I usually decide what position it's going to stay in and put it into that position. So here I've decided to have this cat sat down, so I'll keep it in this position and add core wool to build up its shape. This is because once you've stabbed the wool quite firmly, it may well restrict the movement of the wire, holding the wires in this position. So how could you create a poseable item that maybe you could use for stop motion animation? Well if this is something you're interested in, please let me know in the comments. I've done a couple of items like this in the past and have some exciting plans for this cat. So don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so that you don't miss my future videos. And if you'd like to see how I created a posable armature for a person, then you'll want to watch this video next where I show you how I did this and created sadness from the film Inside Out. Thanks for watching.